what's up guys welcome back to another episode today we're gonna be fixing the 71 c10 all right guys so as you can see it's been snowing so much it's been snowing for like the past three days but that doesn't mean the work has to stop on the on the 71 c10 known as pegasus all right guys let me show you what we're gonna be fixing today we're gonna be replacing this because like the coolant reservoir is all cracked and everything so we got a new one that we're gonna be replacing it with and it's gonna make it look way more cooler too but yeah, let's get let's get this thing out so you can replace it all right guys so we're gonna be replacing it with this one let's do a little unboxing for y'all it's, it's like a chrome finish but i don't think it's real chrome Shoo, look at this yeah it's super cool like it can tell us the like the little anti-freeze level right there on the side and like it's pretty small i think it's probably a little, a little bit smaller than the other one uh we might be having to change where these are at but i think they're fine where they're at right now all right guys let's get this project underway Okay guys, so the first thing we'll be doing is taking off these screws and uh, taking off the old reservoir. So you can see guys that like it's like pretty much broken like it, didn't, it wasn't gonna hold anything so it's a good thing that we're gonna change it out for a newer one and hopefully uh make it look a little bit more cooler at the same time oh yeah this one was uh, original all right guys so we're gonna be taking off the clamp that's connected to the uh, radiator so let me go ahead and do that right now then i think it might be a little bit it's gonna be a little bit hard to take off the hose because it's the original one but Hopefully none of steam comes out because I just got it on the drive. Perfect. Okay. Alright, cool. We got this one out. It's time to put the new one in. But actually we have to make new holes for the new reservoir. And I got some uh, screws right here. And then I couldn't find any lock washers because these were the only ones that could fit. But in the future I'm going to buy some lock washers and some actual washers. So. They won't fall off when i'm driving we're gonna put this around here somewhere but i have to drill some holes on the reservoir so we can go ahead and install it i guess let's go ahead and do that right now and we're gonna drill through here too so we can put it on the support for the truck Shoo. so we're just gonna eyeball this if it doesn't come out perfect then because I'm not a true engineer. <laughs> I think it's perfect right there. All right, guys, so this is the problem. I'm not sure I'm gonna get my hand through there. I should have thought this too. <laughs> but you never say never, right? Now it's under tight, as you can see, it doesn't move at all. Alright guys, I'm just going to make sure everything's tight once again, because I don't want it leaking or anything. Oh no, we need a knife, we need a knife. Oh, no. Five hours later. Alright guys, so now we gotta make sure that it's tight. So we're gonna use our secret weapon. All 
All right, guys, so we're gonna put the dump because, like, whenever this one gets really full, it's gonna dump out like to the floor. So, we're gonna go ahead and put the last line on here. It's a little bit hard to push on. All right, guys, so I was able to get this on, but I had to put a little bit of oil on the fitting because it was super tight. So, yeah, like, if you ever have to do this or put like any like hoses on, uh, like a valve or anything, put some oil if it's a little bit too tight so it can like uh, slide into place but yeah so now we're just gonna tighten this up and then we should be done and we're gonna fill it with coolant all right guys we're gonna fill up the reservoir with coolant now if you look in there you're gonna see that it's brand spanking new super shiny in there i'm gonna fill it with the orange gm coolant by the way hopefully i won't spill any all right guys so as y'all can see like it's pretty much full we're gonna go ahead and stop Alright guys, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is uh, trying to get the headlights to turn on when the turn signal turns on. Cause uh, these headlights, they're also orange, and like you're supposed to connect them to the turn signals. It's like whenever you pre uh, turn on the turn signal, like it changes color. This is the uh, color for like the daytime running lights. But we're gonna see if we can hook up to this turn signal or this light. It's like whenever we turn on the signal, it will start flashing too. Let's see if we can. Uh, get this done okay, so the next thing is we have to do is uh, check like uh, which cable has power as you can see like the turn signal is on right now it's flashing so we're gonna go ahead and like look in here and we're gonna see which one of these uh, cables is one that's the positive so we can connect the, the the headlight to it and the way we're gonna do that is with the multimeter so we're gonna put this to a negative which is like the chassis right here we're gonna hit connect this to like uh, one key within the other one and we're gonna see which one uh, has power all right guys so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna um, we're gonna go ahead and put the the multimeter to 12 volts which is right here 12 volts and like now it's reading like a uh, current so whenever you hook up to like for example something that has power it's gonna if you have a good battery it's gonna go to 12 volts or higher but like if you have like a bad battery it's probably gonna be like under 12 or 11. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, guys. So we found like the wire that has power. Like, let me go ahead and show y'all. Put this in here. And you can look at the multimeter, and it's like um going down and up because like uh, it's flashing. So yeah, so it's still blue when it has power. So we're gonna go ahead and tap into that wire and see if we can get the, the turn signals on the headlights working. Alright guys, so this connector, uh, if you look in here, it has uh, one of these prongs you can like put inside. I'm not sure how well y'all can see that. But we have a connector right here. So we're going to use one of these. And we're going to crimp it on the wire. We're actually going to take off this bad piece and like strip a whole new one. Let's go ahead and do that. Put it in the 14. Grab it. Pull. And then we're gonna go ahead and twist it. Cut a little bit more off oh, just so we can have like a flush finish. Get our connector. Connect it in here. Like that. Get the crimpers back. And put it on the blue one. And push down. And push down and push that one more time all right so we have the connector ready i'll go ahead and connect it to our turn signal and before we cut this cable we're gonna connect it first to the turn signal see like if it's even working if y'all come look in the front as y'all can see like when the turn signal is on it's gonna start uh, flashing all right guys so if y'all look at the bar y'all can see like they're flashing at the same time that's pretty cool so we're gonna go ahead and get the other side connected now and like i'll show y'all like a uh, before and after all right so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're probably gonna solder it so uh we don't have like any wires exposed and we have a good connection too so, but you might be asking how you're gonna get how you gonna get power for that let me show you all right guys so this is the inverter you just connect it to the cigarette 
lighter plug and like it gives you power so you can connect like a something small in this case we're gonna use a soldering iron so this is the soldering iron we're gonna use I have a little stand for it and this is like the actual like machine itself like you can change the temperature on it this is the wire we used to weld so yeah let's go ahead and uh, finish this up so we can see how it looks We're also going to be using some heat shrink guys, so we won't have like any uh, short outs. Alright guys, so we pretty much have everything uh, wired up, so we're going to go ahead and solder it now. And then like put the heat shrink afterwards. Alright guys, so for this headlight, um, the bar is actually in the back of it, so we're going to have to take off the whole headlight and uh, get the put the wires and connect them. Okay guys, so this is uh, the cable we're going to be connecting to the turn signals. These are the daytime running lights. But yeah, this is the one we're going to be connecting. Okay guys, so we're going to be tapping into this blue wire. This one's a positive one. This one's the one that has a signal. Alright guys, so this is it for this video. I'll see you next time.